Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, 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 wow. Well, well, what a shaky start. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. This is my sister, Victoria Chan. Hello. It is I, Jonathan, again. Yeah. You're, uh, you're 19. You're a student at the prestigious a and M. Gigum. <laughs> Studies uh, marketing. Oh wait, not yet. But you'll. Yeah, that's you'll, not intended major. Right, right. And uh, avid baker. Right. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yes. I mean, you're bringing stuff to college station. Oh yeah. You, you really I, want. I have a I have a baking like bucket list <laughs> on my Instagram. That has like 20 plus things of yeah. stuff I want to bake. And I've baked quite a few things during this quarantine, so I guess that's a good descriptor. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for being here talking with your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know for some sibling. It takes a while in their life to get to the point where they're uh, more comfortable just chatting up. Chatting. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? I mean, it's all adults. Mm. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Cause like, it's not like we hit adulthood and we're just all like, oh, we can't, we can't be friends. It was, it was something that's been around, know, like, pretty much most of our life, right? Yeah, we've been pretty yeah. close since. We were young. I think just like going through school together, we could just talk about stuff because we're in, like close in age, mm -hmm. and like we went to the same schools and stuff, so like we understood what was going on. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, also you know, faith I think is a big mm -hmm. part. Like both pretty grounded in it. I think we're both. What people would consider like the the good kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. It wasn't Church you know super is. rebellious. Like we're both still in the faith, and mm. you know, I, I think there's there's definitely people out there who who grow up in the church and leave, and then like you yeah. have some sort of division there. Mm. Um, but to have like that those values, those core values, be the same. So, yeah, but it's also sure. interesting because we both have like a general openness to like new ideas and just like hearing people out, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. And I think we tell people like we should do that. But then a lot of time I mean, I think ourselves include some that we don't want to hear people out. But we'll tend to do it. A bit more than maybe the average person. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> a lot of, like, I feel like there's a good foundation of things that has made us be able to be close. Even yeah. though we're, we are very different people. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you get so mad when people are like, you look alike. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we don't. <laughs> That's wrong. I'm just kidding. But I was like, actually, I never really thought about it. I was like, do we? I guess we don't. Huh? I don't, I don't think, think we look that similar. Like, yeah. if I saw us walking yeah. around, I wouldn't think like, oh, they're siblings. Yeah. Like maybe relatives. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, too many funny stories. I know. Are you thinking about the same <laughs> yeah, thing I'm thinking? <laughs> That's okay. I'm not really tired. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Four and a half minutes in. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. We're... <laughs> Particular thing you want to talk about first? We don't really think about this. Um. No, I'm not. No, yeah. I was just 
see. Okay. No, nothing in particular. Okay, cool. Well, since we talked, well, a little bit about faith growing up a bit. Mm. I guess maybe a segue from there is just like our church circles. Um, like, it's an interesting dynamic to look at between like all the different church, the Houston Chinese churches that go to campus stuff. And it's today, the 20th, oh, did you hear about the, the impact the camp online thing? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, also, mm. yesterday when I was talking with my friend, he was like telling me a little bit about it. Oh, was, did they go? No. Oh. But he like heard about it and then because it was online, he didn't want to go. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, it's it is very different. I mean, I kind of get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He's already good. going to like another camp online, so um, it's kind of a lot to go to multiple camps online. Yeah. But yeah. I guess I just have a little bit of a different perspective since I've gone to quite a few online things at this point now with inner varsity. Mm. But yeah. Anyways, back to topic. Um. Very interested to think, to hear what you think about like growing up in our church. Like, what was that social dynamic like growing up with your peers and then with like other churches? Mm. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a loaded question, but it's a loaded <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, yeah. So our church means a lot to me. It's been a big part of my life ever since I was young, and I, that's not the same for everybody who goes, which is okay. But like for me, it's it's pretty big. Um, so yeah, I guess just like growing up, always going to a Chinese church like every Sunday. I remember at one point when like I realized like oh, like other kids don't go to church on Sunday. I didn't know that for a while because that's all I ever known. And also just think about how other churches, like, they function differently, some are multi-ethnic, or they don't have any, like, ethnic ties, and, like, our church has Chinese in the name. It's also mainly Cantonese, um, which our dad's side is Cantonese, so it's, like, unique in that way, too. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it is, like, it was such a bubble, I think. For us, just to be surrounded by so many like-minded people, a lot of, like our parents' age group, they all like immigrated, and so they had similar stories, and um, did not, most of them did not grow up um, in Christian households, and then like for our age, most of us did like grow up mm. in church and stuff, so, I don't know. Um, hmm. I guess like recently as I've been listening to more podcasts from Asian Americans is really interesting or I think like it was such a privilege to have our church as a cultural like center mm -hmm. in a way because a lot of people in different areas just like didn't have that growing up. We had a place where like speaking Cantonese was normal like eating Chinese food was celebrated. Like our holidays were like, like everybody knew them, you know, we didn't have to explain it to people. And like, it was just a part of our church, which I think is really cool. Um, and like, yeah, like I've taken that for granted and I really appreciate that now, right? Cause there was like, even though for us, like we don't really know that much Chinese, like <laughs> we have gained so much more culturally from our church too. Um, yeah, and then I guess like the other part of your question, like talking about the Houston Chinese churches, I guess like now and like as I was older in high school and like after going to Impact, like the Houston Impact, um, it's hard not to compare <laughs> your church with other churches. I don't know, just like That's be like, weird. oh, your church? 
has a lot more people than we do and a lot more money than we do and <laughs> y'all get to do a lot of different things that we don't get to because we don't have the manpower um we don't have the leadership as in like the number of leaders um or the roles that other churches have like a youth pastor youth minister or anything like we've never had that well right yeah we've well, never had it we never had an official like youth minister pastor um so that's yeah i think like there have been a lot of challenges and just like not trying to be envious or um resentful towards other churches that seem like they got it all yeah right but i think that there is so much like to be grateful for in our small church that it's like that family feel like everybody knows each other mostly and that like we get to have a lot more involvement and say i guess like when we were youth because there wasn't like a, a an adult who was directing most of it it's like mm. we got to do what we wanted kind of like we we set the tone we set the direction for everything yeah which i think is cool so, yeah, we're not involved. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's a lot. It's, um, when, when I hear all that from you, it feels, or my observation from that is like, it's like a very macro perspective. And I think that's really interesting. Cause like, when I was formulating this question, I was thinking of a lot of like the I guess more micro, like, um, person-to-person interactions, like, mm. maybe how those would affect you, but, like, the thing you just mentioned with, uh, comparing churches, um, because I think for me, personally, I it never hit me, like, super hard, I don't, I don't know, I'm just kind of like, oh, actually, I, I don't think I really made that the two and two together yeah. it just kind of like slipped in there i don't know maybe like yeah. once, once like i went to like job pajamas like oh okay this is this is very cool <laughs> yeah. um honestly i didn't think too much about like uh yeah camp well, like wait you know once you get to like one of their facilities it's like okay um <laughs> <laughs> like y'all have a whole building for like, youth or something like that um, yeah, so, right, again, so the question was, like, what were the social aspects of, like, growing up in, in a Chinese church and then in this Chinese church pool? Um, oh, man, I guess in my head, um, a lot of of what I was trying to get out was like how our own like family kind of was like situated in our own church um because I was trying to like think through this like a little bit before um I don't know if you would agree with the statement per se or at least the wording of it sometimes or I maybe mean, even a lot of times it feels like maybe we're like the black sheep source it feels weird like mm -hmm. let me let me explain right like i like i have an inkling of like oh, i i get, get that <laughs> like we're in the church um of course um but even with some things you say like parents immigrating here right i think a lot of the our our friends our peers parents they immigrated like or college or like after like when they were adults and stuff and for our both our parents right they immigrated here um or not, like even younger in elementary and then mm -hmm. our mom in high school and so like i think there's already like a difference there mm -hmm. i mean and also like their english is like yeah on generally have, much better <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, Wait. It's, it's, yeah mm. yeah and yeah just thinking to like the, the the interactions that i was trying to get to it's like um 
we didn't like fit into like a fellowship and i yeah we didn't like (laughs) kind of stick with one either it was odd i mean eventually we stuck we stuck with the english fellowship right but in the beginning we were kind of like with enoch which is our like cantonese families that are have kids like around our age like maybe plus minus three four years Mm -hmm. um and like we would go there, but it never, like, looking back on it now, like, our parents aren't exactly like super buddy buddy with any of them. Like, they can talk and they can be like chill and stuff, but like, you, we would never be caught like, hey, you want to come over for dinner like randomly on like uh, mm-hmm. Thursday? <laughs> it's like, we're like going on a camping yeah, trip together. To- yeah. No shade, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah. yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah, like you said, no shade. It's just, like, observing yeah. and, like, just putting a name to it. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what, what <laughs> how you feel I about that. I didn't think that you were... You'd bring up this, but I... I I'm <laughs> glad that you did, honestly. Yeah, okay. I guess part of what I was thinking about saying originally was like how how our parents were part of like the fellowship that founded our church that like they were the people in the fellowship that changed the fellowship into a church which i think is really cool so like we our family has been involved in this church since the beginning right or like basically since it was like yeah and since we were at another church as a small group. As a fel- yeah, small yeah. fellowship, so. Um, and like our parents have served on church council and been Sunday school teachers and Awana leaders. And then for us, like we were in praise team and like youth leadership team. And so our family and our aunts also have like served and like, so our family has like been in the church and like in the the behind the scenes stuff in a lot of ways at the same time like yeah i guess you're bringing up that like we didn't really fit in a lot of ways because our our family is pretty american um in comparison to a lot of the other families at our church like we our parents spoke english to us for the most part right i think that's like a huge difference and like we've I mean, I've gotten a lot of, like, shade and shame from not being able to speak Cantonese well enough, right? Like, I remember some of the, like, seniors at church, like, I mean, I don't blame them. I don't think they really knew better, but they would criticize me for, like, not being able to speak Cantonese. And I'm like, I'm sorry that, like, I wasn't raised that way. Like, I didn't have control over what my parents taught me. You know, and they they wanted us to speak English, like, without accents and stuff, so that we could fit in, I feel like, was was part of their thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to learn and need English anyways, might as well yeah. just speak it at home. And our parents, like, speak different languages, so English is, like, common ground, I guess. And they also never made us go to Chinese yeah, school. Yeah, we never went to Chinese school either. Yeah. So I feel like maybe that, like, American side or yeah. that emphasis on it is like what also what made us pretty different from a lot of other families yeah yeah, yeah I definitely oh my gosh <laughs> I don't know you just bringing that up like made me think about like a lot of times I feel like I don't think this is a good mindset but I feel kind of bad for us or feel bad for myself of like oh I'm not as close with some other people at church because our parents are not as close with their parents and like we weren't able to go on like camping trips with them you know during the summers and stuff growing up and so now we're just like not gonna be as close as like those people who did go together and those families that were like super close and so I don't know. I don't like blame our parents. I think that it's just they didn't like click super well, and like you don't really, you don't always have control over that, right? So yeah. 
Yeah, and I still, like, I, we've had a lot of discussions over the years, too, about our parents talking about maybe leaving our church and stuff, and they right. always, they're always like, yeah, there's no, like, people here that are really keeping us, <laughs> like, <laughs> like wanting, like making us feel like we have to stay other than like our grandmas and their friends. Like they, there's, they don't have, for themselves, yeah. they don't have those like best friends at our church. Yeah. Which I feel like is so unfortunate after spending so much time here. Yeah, and we've yeah. seen, right, a lot of. Families come and go the, <laughs> the more American, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I don't want to turn it to race, but like, we've, we've had a few white families, or like, mixed families, yeah. and they're like, well, I think, it, right, when we, one pastor, Jern, wanted to get a Mandarin, they're like, a Mandarin pastor, they're like, bye bye <laughs> Yeah, when they saw that, like, because they had hoped for so long that our, our church would would bridge that Ameri- like Asian and American gap and then like when the church said we want to go more Chinese and cater to more like new immigrants and stuff um, yeah. that was just not the direction that they were hoping for so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm still glad that, that we were part of the Enoch Fellowship while we were young mm. like like elementary school time because that did help a lot with like developing relationships with the other kids and stuff. I guess in middle school like when we started going to like Mandarin Mm -hmm. fellowship and the English ones was harder because there was just less kids our age. So It's hard when your family, like, for us, like, we were very American, but we also, my dad's, like, dad's side is Cantonese, but mom's side is Mandarin, and so we are all these different things, and there's no, like, perfect fellowship that suits us, like, you know, that's why we were in yeah. all three different things, <laughs> because, like, our family was, like, all of them, yeah. right? We weren't just one. Huh? Maybe I'm using that term wrong. What? <laughs> Never mind. I'm confused. <laughs> you really lost me in that one, but... Man. Yeah. This is cool. This is cool. Man. Okay, one, one last thing. Yeah, we're about to okay. move on. But I just remember, like, sometimes I would be offended. Or not offended, but like disappointed if our family didn't get invited to something where it seems like all the other kids our age and their parents were getting yeah, invited to. Yeah. And I remember mom like explicitly saying like she was like this, like she was pretty upset that yeah. she wasn't invited to some of the stuff too. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, what can you really do about it? Because if you if you tell them, then it feels kind of forced and like out of obligation, and that's still not good. But then, like, if you don't tell them, then we just keep getting left out, and then kind of sucks. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you don't do business, you don't make fun your job bad. Or for ping pong. <laughs> ping pong is the answer. Ping pong is the fire. <laughs> we found the answer. Oh man, I feel like I'm going for some water. Is it? I might. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, but I feel like the the big unifier for all for for peers and us was the the lack of the the talk. <laughs> the storks be coming, dropping seashells. I don't know. They'd be like. What? Nice, uh, bridge there. <laughs> <laughs> Real soon. No! Wiki! Uh, Wiki! Oh, man. But yeah. I... 
what the talk never happened. I don't know. It's I like, think that is a cultural thing yeah, with like sure. both Asians and as Christians. We don't talk about mm. sex. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Well, I don't really talk to. Oh, it's, well, I, yeah, I don't talk to many Christians of different ethnicities, so I oh. don't really. I'm not aware. But I can believe it. Well, I still think that like. I mean, yeah, I guess I haven't either, but I still feel like a lot of the reasons why parents or like people justify not talking about it is because, oh, well, the Bible just says don't have sexual marriage and that's all we got to say, you know? So even like they use that as like a justification for it. I guess. I don't know. That's how I feel about it. I feel, if they're being honest with themselves at the core, it's also like, it's just an awkward conversation. Mm. <laughs> yeah. In the first place. Oh, yeah. It's like, I just don't think I've been thinking, well, you can apply this to a lot of things in life, but, so a lot of things, as, as, as you do adulting, there's like no manual. Like, no one teaches you how to do it. Mm. So then, like, instead of actually, like, trying to stumble along and, like, get through it, you just kind of like, what? Let's just not do it. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's like, it's the easy way out, right? To um, just avoid talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, but I find that so problematic. I, I mean, yeah, it, it definitely is. I'm just trying to call it as I see yeah. it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, what if we asked our parents, like, how did you find out what sex was? Because... I mean, yeah. probably their parents didn't talk to them about it. Yeah. Because I feel like if their parents had talked to them, then they would have talked to us about it. And then, oh uh, man. Probably. Maybe, oh, I don't know why I think these things. But I think about, <laughs> I think about, like, people's wedding nights is like, so... Oh my gosh. <laughs> how do you figure out how to do it? Do you just both stumble around? <laughs> yeah, no, I thought about that too. I was thinking about, like, when we're engaged to be like... <laughs> Just, just, no, like, don't put too much expectation on the wedding night. I feel like a lot of people have this idea in their head, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have the best sex of my life on my wedding night. You're probably not. <laughs> You're, <laughs> like, chances are, most definitely not. <laughs> most, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's funny. funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. What's this one? Oh, yeah. Our parents still joke about sex. <laughs> sex and love like the sports. Oh, At least yeah. dad, dad does. does. I was like... <laughs> the birds and the bees. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. It's weird. It's like... I also feel like the words have like so much power. Like... Well, I don't know. I feel like mm, we're, we talk about maybe rape more easily. But we don't, we, we don't really use the word sex, right? Like, yeah. It's not like, Even it's not at a the bad word. It's we just, were like kind of beating around yeah. the bush talking oh, about yeah, it. Oh yeah, yeah, See, Like yeah. The, the talk, yeah. instead of just talking about sex. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, you can use it. It's not, it's, yeah. it's, it's natural. It's, it's, it's God's gift as well. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, but I do oh. So many layers. It also goes into like the the Asian cultural aspect of like honor and shame. Mm. Right. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's that's where us as a family is more Asian. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And then like I don't well. Okay, I, I need to keep talking. <laughs> I was thinking too many things, and then nothing came out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. So going into the future, like, I don't know if you want kids, because like I know like you don't. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like you don't want to have kids. Probably as of right now, like naturally, right? Or like yeah. So my stance, or 
I mean, it's not a stance, but just like my hope is that I will adopt kids and not have kids through natural birth. I'm not like 100% against having kids through natural birth, then I know that like it's like such a privilege to be able to do that because mm-hmm. a lot of people can't, but it's just, I don't know, I just have such a strong heart to adopt and so I don't really see it as like necessary for me to like raise a family that comes out of my womb, like I feel, I don't know. Cool. That's, yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Alright, so now we have their context. So assuming, right, you you have a child and adopted, mm-hmm. like, have you ever, well, this is really far in the future, but like, thought about well, having, having the, the talk? talk. Yes, <laughs> I have. I've also, I've, all, I've talked to other people about this too, like oh, how, really? okay. how we would have the talk with our kids yeah. in the future. And I think, I think it's like, yeah, like that's way down the line. <laughs> But I think it's cool to talk about it now because it gives us like a place and a chance to talk about it like while we're young and just to talk about it because we don't really get to a Mm -hmm. lot of times. So yeah, I have asked people that. I don't know, I am, I think it is really important to talk about sex with your kids like fairly openly because I want them to know that, like, your job as a parent is to, like, give direction and guidance and advice, right? And Mm -hmm. especially as, like, Christians, like, we, or, like, the Bible has a lot of um, direction, I guess, about sex, too. And so, like, if we want our kids to, to be able to follow that, we need to talk about it. And... Oh yeah, like, and I think it's just important, like, even if you want, like, your kids to abstain until marriage, I think it's just, like, you just gotta teach them (laughs) how to have safe sex, though. Like, it's just, like, because you cannot control them, right? And I'd rather them do it safely than, like, look up stuff on the internet or hear things from their friends and peers and, like, be misinformed about it. Like, there's just so much damage that can happen that way. And, like, not even just, like, sex, but, like, masturbation and, like, porn. Like, I think you really need to talk to your kids about that, like, pretty young, because... You you, you, you block block their (laughs) (laughs) Wi-Fi. But it's just, like, I think it would have been really... I mean, I can't even imagine what it would have been like to have that kind of talk when I was young. But, like, I had all these urges and all these feelings that I didn't know what it was or what to do with it. I felt yeah. so, like, shameful and dirty about it. But Ugh. it's natural. Like, it's part of growing Ugh. up. Like, that's why puberty is so awkward. And, like, you know? Yeah. Like, that's why it is that way. And so it's just, like, like instead of having them just hide it or or release it in, <laughs> in whatever, like, <laughs> random ways that are uninformed like i want them to feel like you can ask me about it you can ask me like why am i like horny or like what does horny mean or like mm. why, why do people joke about this at school like i don't understand yeah. or like what if i do like want to have sex or something like how would i protect myself right good good we should make everyone the parents and child watch just around the corner. And then the kid just has to sit there, and then afterwards, the parents like, any question? <laughs> what? I don't, okay, honestly, the only thing I remember from just around the corner is the theme song. <laughs> oh, I remember. The, I don't even <laughs> they remember. They were showing like the, about the pubic that. hair evolution. It was like so funny. <laughs> they talked about sex they talked about puberty of course yeah they talked about the development like, of the yeah, physical the parts gynads, right? I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not until your your health class in middle school where they they just slap you and then they give you the stds too it's like oh. <laughs> yeah yeah they showed us pictures of it and i was like <laughs> i didn't know what a healthy penis looks like <laughs> So all I 
<laughs> like that was the only reference I had. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's pretty you know, funny. It makes me think about like, when, when is the right time to talk about it? Because like, yeah. you know, the health class, you have that window between just around the corner and fourth like and fifth, fifth grade. grade. Yeah. Like, like, girls watched it earlier, I remember. They watched it in fourth grade because they started. At least that was for my, my Oh, peers. maybe, yeah. I don't and know then the boys are getting it. Yeah. <laughs> and then everyone, for us, got it in seventh grade. Health? Yeah, health. Yeah. Really? Oh my goodness, I can't imagine talking to like a 11 year old. Or like I know. 11, what, 11, 12, 13? It's kind of crazy, oh. but I, I just like. But that's just how the body is, and then you need to talk about it, right? Be like those parents if you have a son with you the condom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just think. <laughs> yeah, there's so many like. <sighs> Like, comical, but also yeah. just, like, terrible examples of how to talk about sex. And there's not a lot of good examples, <laughs> right? Like, mm. it's just, yeah. it's just hard, because I haven't seen it done well. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, the church doesn't talk about it, too, right? Yeah. Like, I think that was such was, a huge... <laughs> I think that was such a huge problem in high school for me. Just because I was like, wait, all my friends are talking about it. How come we don't? And then, like, if we talked about it in church, it'd be so minimal. Just like, just don't have it. <laughs> just, yeah, just yeah. don't <laughs> be a morning. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, okay, that doesn't really give me practical stuff. <laughs> That doesn't give me a place to talk about, like, that doesn't validate how I'm feeling, or anything. Like, that's just, yeah. it's just kind of like a, we don't really want to know, and yeah. don't do it. Which yeah. is not helpful. Right, I think that's where the, the youth minister pastor really comes in. Because they have, like, the authority and the trust, I hope, mm. you know, to, to be able to enter into that space. And I know, like... FBCC's he's done like a series about it something yeah. like Kevin's talked to me about it uh, Kevin Lee from episode 2 <laughs> you can watch um, that <laughs> if you haven't already um and yeah so that's cool but like obviously FBCC is like the biggest of all the Chinese well you don't even call it all the Chinese shit, but um yeah and it's cool yeah, I, I guess like maybe camp like is sort of a space, <laughs> sort of. It's uh, like yeah, it, it's like it's not the greatest, but it's like uh, I guess it's something. It's a big. I think it's a good stepping stone. For, yeah. Um. Yeah. Actually, camp was like one of the few places that I ever really was able to hear about it or talk about it, because like a lot of the messages they would include that, and a lot of the speakers, um where yeah the most of the speakers were male and then they would also mm. like usually bring up like sins in their past like in their history mm -hmm. and their story and be pretty open about it which is good i guess for me also like as a woman or as a girl like i kind of wish that there were more girl like like girls that were like a little bit older than me that were um able to speak about it more too because i felt like it was so like even though it, it took it takes a lot of vulnerability to talk about like guys watching porn as like a pastor or something i think it's like that's pretty common though like yeah it's yeah. pretty like well known that like most guys watch porn that's so a it's, that's a really interesting <laughs> right but then they don't really talk about girls as much, uh, like as if we don't have the same urges, right? Mm. We're just like, yeah. we just are able to hide it a little better, I guess. Yeah, I think it's on that topic, I think it's all, 
<laughs> and like, in my head, it was always like, oh, girls, they're fine. Like, they, they have everything under control. I mean, they kind of have like the periods and like those moody times. But other than that, <laughs> fine. Yeah. And then, I, yeah. and then like, I don't know when that whole wall was shattered. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess they have hormones and urges too. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> I think I think it just like all the the lack of testimony or just like the lack of spaces to talk about it for girls has just like reinforced that idea that oh it's not even a problem like if we don't talk about it then it's not a problem yeah, but it's just yeah. it's even worse because it's like a hidden problem right yeah. and, it, and it goes back again to like being Asian doesn't help. Our culture is like, this is a big, big tab. Yeah. <laughs> Again, with the honor, shame thing. Like, yeah. uh, you gotta be such a perfect little child. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do appreciate about it, though, is like, I guess, okay, this is probably like the line of how how vulnerable I'll be about this topic, but I'm a pretty horny person in general, and so I've appreciated K-dramas right now because I can have a media that I can watch where there is not a sex scene in every episode. And that helps me a lot. Okay, it's so hard to watch American shows where they just talk about sex all the time, they have sex every other episode, and like, they don't even just like show them going into the bedroom, they show a lot, and it's like, I did not ask for three minutes of porn like, I just wanted the plot, and like, I wanted to see character development. Like, I didn't want to see that, you know? But they just, because like, American culture, like, they, uh... They, they, put, they put, like, sex on a pedestal. So it's like, they they just, like, put it in all their, all the media and stuff, and so it's like, that's too much for me. I can't handle that. <laughs> so that's, like, one thing I, I think is good about it. <laughs> like, that's, that's a really roundabout point. I mean, yes. Yeah, you know, is... I, I think it's bad that we like they don't talk about it, but it's good that it's not put everywhere, like yeah, like sexualizing your, your stuff. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. The good thing <laughs> I don't watch American TV. I just watch it. <laughs> Okay, but Japanese. <laughs> I'm just well, well. To be fair, like cartoons, all cartoons can be quite lewd. <laughs> the edge. Yikes. What was I thinking about? <laughs> yeah. But Asian yeah. American <laughs> shame and. Or I mean, I kind of can go off of the things like the sex culture. Is so big. It's, uh, well, um, Talking about America? Yeah, America. Yeah. It's like, man. And it's like, it's crazy to me to think about, like, like, I don't know what the 50s were called, but like, that was like the, like, glory, glorious, like, white picket fence, like, uh -huh. nice neighbors, everyone's, like, hi, and, like, yeah. your door's unlocked, you're, uh -huh. you're, you're playing with the Give neighbor's kids, yeah, all right, <laughs> and Elk Man's like, are you, <laughs> it's like, yes, okay, <laughs> what about it, like, and, and the, sh the TV shows would be, like, the purest thing, mm. I think there, there was a lot of racism, but, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but there, there, there'd be no, sexism. there's no, yeah, but there'd be no sex, right? I think, like, it was still the, the most provocative thing was, like, a kiss. It was, oh, it's a yeah. kiss. Yeah. A uh, passionate kiss. Oh, what, what was it, well, 70, yeah, 70 years now? I mean, I guess that's kind of a, I don't know, it's not a long time now. But, like, our times like have changed. Like a 180. Yeah. Like, oh, man. Crazy. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, it's really hard to have like a balance of like freedom to talk about it without shoving it in your face all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, hmm. well, I don't know. 
I was just thinking about like how sex culture has affected the genders. I, I, mean, I think it affects both of them yeah, like, yeah, very differently. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot too. Um, Cause I, I feel like girls have to worry a lot more about like image and like lo- looking a certain way. And then like, <laughs> I think there's like the, the like dad bod stereotype where like, like, yeah, like, eh. you know, you stop, uh, you, you, get, you get to stop trying after like, 30 or something. <laughs> you and know, you'll just... still get the pretty girl in those, yeah. in those rom-coms and stuff. Yeah, right. I'm right. just like, I don't get that. Why does the guy look like this? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not saying it's bad that the guy looks like that, but we should have more female love interests that just look average, that are like, have, have some weight, have some love handles, you know, have wrinkles, and they're still yeah. the love interests. Yeah. You know? It's such a, such a difficult line to cross. Man, you just can't satisfy everybody. It's like... Mm-hmm. I think, on the inside, people, on average for the most part, want to see like the... the, the peak of humanity, the, the physique the physical oh. specimen, <laughs> right, for, for both genders. Yeah. Um, but then there's also, like, the... Mm, well, what's the word? The... I don't want to use woke, but... <sighs> on woke, or, like, you can appreciate, like, like, not being the best of the best. Mm-hmm. And then, like... As as media, like you tiptoe that line, but then like there's there's always gonna be haters. I guess that was always the case. There was always haters, but now there's yeah. like so much less of a societal consensus. It feels like of like beauty. I guess it feels like yeah. I guess maybe our culture is at war. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> culture war. <laughs> Oh yeah, it is. I think, yeah, like we've turned a lot of things like on its head of like what what it means to be like sexy, what it means to be yeah. like, a guy or a girl too, or like a like an attractive guy or a girl. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You can have dreams. <laughs> something I can add, but I think it's kind of interesting to me that, so I'm like, I consider myself a feminist and all, all that, right? And it's really interesting to me that I had like posted like bikini pictures on Instagram. I was d- thinking about a lot of stuff when I was doing that, which was good for me and very reflective of just like balancing modesty and appreciating my own body as it is and also just like being okay with like celebrating it too as like what god has given me right but then at the same time i would be kind of frustrated if the guys didn't sexualize me and i was like whoa like i'm a feminist like how like the goal is to not be sexualized right and then i was like thinking just like i've been so trained to as like my goal as a pretty girl is to be like the ideal thing and like sex object and so it was kind of like I just felt really strange about it like I it was like like if you sexualized me I would be mad but if you didn't I was kind of disappointed and I was just like ah like I don't know what to think um and then it's just like trying to teach myself out of like unlearn all these things that I've learned from society and from media or just like what it means to be attractive, what it means to be confident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for admitting that. I think that's huge. Like, well, that must be like really hard to say I can't imagine. Um, yeah. I mean, because you're obviously 
already being very vulnerable, right, like, physically, <laughs> with yeah. her and her figure. Um, but two, I love those things. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, like, having such inner turmoil. I was like, why do I feel this way? I shouldn't, right? Yeah. That's like, hmm. Social media. It's interesting. Interesting thing. Um, so... I think then, like, can you... Help me, like, understand... More of, like, why you want to post it? Because, like, from my point of view, right, it could be just, like, oh, just don't post it. And, like, you know, but, like, I know there's probably something more complex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've always thought of, I don't know, just, I guess, since, like, our generation has grown up with social media, and I, I like it a lot. I like Instagram and just being able to share stuff with people a lot, like that concept. And I've just been very like, I feel like I have a really close and deep relationship with Instagram. Like not, not like I'm obsessed with it, but like, I don't know, the stuff I post is important to me. Mm. And, and I like posting a lot. If you, if you follow me, you know. <laughs> <coughs> you can plug yourself. <laughs> but yeah, so I was thinking about it a lot because and I, I wrote a lot for one of my captions about it. And it was one of my most liked posts, which I thought was really cool. And a lot of people responded to in the comments, which meant that they read it, mm. which was like good. <laughs> <laughs> Not just liking the pictures, but hey. the reading the story behind it. So yeah, I I wrestled with <clears throat> the idea of like posting bikini pictures online for a while, because I was like, oh, that seems really like like out there and like I am a Christian and I've been trying to work on modesty and so like how can I post pictures of myself wearing very little clothes you know but I don't I've just also been thinking about how like for me like modesty is like about the heart and about like what is my intention of posting you know what is my intention of the clothes I wear uh, and so like you can wear like a trash bag and not be modest <laughs> like you can wear a bikini and still have like a modest mindset that's that's just what i believe i'm sorry <laughs> i'm trying but, to imagine that okay not a trash <laughs> bag but like <laughs> like i don't know yeah I, I, like a fully I, yeah, clothed I, I guess. <laughs> yeah so i don't know i was just thinking like also something i wrote in my caption when i reflecting on it a lot, it's kind of mm -hmm. snappy, but I felt like bikinis were kind of empowering to me because mm. I think, I don't know, I think God has really blessed me with a, a body that is, that like for the most part fits into like society's standard of beauty, like being skinny is like a big thing and I'm skinny so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but I am pretty self-conscious about being like flat chested or just like not that curvy, which I think comes from like my Asian um, genetics. Like that's just like for the most part, Asians are not. And so, and then also just like, it's something I wrote, which is like in there is also about how mom told me at one point like that I would never wear a two piece as long as I lived under her house. Um, and, oh, she said that? Yeah, and that really stuck with me. I think if I asked her now, she probably wouldn't even really remember. I don't know, maybe. But she, she like, gave me her old one piece, and that's what I would wear to, like, any swimming thing. Yeah, I was gonna mention. I was like, you've worn a one piece for a long time. Yeah, I'd, I, I don't know, I had a hate-love relationship with that one piece because so, it was, like, weird. It, it was, like, kind of flattering. But sometimes I thought it was like, it felt like, I don't know, trying too hard or something. I don't even want to get into it. Just a hate-love relationship with that thing. And just like some mom expecting me to always wear one piece too. In my mind, I felt like she 
was like one like you should be modest right and so, mm-hmm. so to be modest means to wear one piece in her her mind at that time and then two like you don't really have a body for a two piece like you're flat chested like you can't really wear a two piece and that's like how I felt about it for a long time you know so now just knowing that like I can I can wear a bikini <laughs> like and yeah. still be modest and still be attractive um or just like feel comfortable and like now I feel so much more comfortable wearing a two-piece than I would a one-piece it just feels weird to me now <laughs> if I were to do that and I think also just being able to post that and just share not just the pictures but like all the things I was thinking about it yeah. too um has been really helpful to other people and that's been really encouraging to me just to hear a bunch of other girls who are like yeah, I struggle with that too. Like either as a Christian, as a flat-chested girl, as an Asian, mm. or just like as a child with pr- like protective parents or mm-hmm. like a little mm-hmm. bit more uh, conservative parents. Like, I don't know, just to know that just what's on the outside does not equal something on the inside. Like it doesn't mm. necessarily mean I'm shallow or seeking attention. Like I just feel comfortable yeah. in this. And like I cover up the stuff I need to cover up, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. That's like that's, that's cool. Kind of why. That's cool. It's like, but it's still always like that—a constant struggle. I feel like I don't know, cause yeah. like like you mentioned before, the the duality, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah, definitely. Um, and. Think it's so right important that you you put all those things in, in the Instagram. Because I don't I don't know how long like, it lets you type, but it's like I was thinking this while you were talking like uh like just a photo is like can only tell you so much mm-hmm. even though like what it was the same like photos like a thousand words yeah. Pictures worth a thousand words. Oh wait, maybe I should talk louder. I don't know how. Oh, your mic. So, anyways, um. Says so that fifty-seven minutes into. Yeah, it. <laughs> I was. I, I. Anyways, um. Yeah, it's, I think it's so important to to write that to not leave stuff up to interpretation um and like it makes me think to like how difficult technology and like being online has made things been mm-hmm. so like you'll never fully understand i feel like maybe you could but until like you actually talk face to face with a person mm-hmm. Or maybe wait, 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 you can do like a, a Zoom call or something. <laughs> um, but I guess that's part of the sacrifice of communication from thousands of miles away. Um, yeah. Yeah, but also that's why I think it's like so that the one. Their Instagram posts that you said that have like a lot of likes and stuff, that, that was like a long post. Mm-hmm. I think, right, the authenticity is like the, the, the thing that really stuck out to people. And obviously, like, most yeah. people like can relate, mm-hmm. or at least some of them. Like, I'm sure there are some guys too. I don't, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know how much tension you feel uh, as a pretty avid user of social media, right? Like, between, like, being authentic and then, like, having that image. Yeah. Especially online. And then there's always offline, too, but we'll start online. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely... I don't know. I'm not, like, an influencer or anything by any means, but, yeah, I do think about it a lot. And, like... I, I already said, like, I have, like, such a deep relationship with Instagram in my mind, but, um, it is always really important to me that I am 
like I have a good balance of like I don't need to put everything out there, right? I don't need to put all the hang our dirty laundry. We'll put a put a little camera right here. So yeah. <laughs> See my whole day. <laughs> yeah, like I, there's yeah. So there's like a balance of just like being able to put stuff that is not always pretty, but also you don't have to put everything that's not pretty out there either. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. Um, I don't know. I think something that I feel is like kind of unique about my Instagram. Well, I I guess since you don't have it, I don't know if you know about this feature, but there's or this culture of it either. But Instagram added a feature where you can archive posts instead of deleting them. And so what most people do is like they only have like a dozen like pictures or maybe like thirty pictures. That they or posts that they like uh, and then they like archive the rest but I have all my almost all my posts since seventh grade <laughs> on there and so some of my friends or like people I know have like dug through my like bot 500 plus posts on Instagram I post a lot and it's just been many years right so <laughs> they can go see my pictures with like Hershey the harp that was my first post in seventh grade, and I feel like part of that, I like, I take a little bit of pride in like having, <laughs> having it open out there because like I don't think, my mindset is like if I thought that it was worth posting at one point and it wasn't harmful to anyone else or myself, then like I can just leave it there. It's kind of like a time capsule. I'm yeah. not saying I'm like, you know, and I shouldn't have to be embarrassed about it because I thought it was worth posting in 7th grade and I think that that's, you know, it was, it was like sentimental or it's like genuine and so still like, and then also like present day too, like stuff like that a lot of my posts nowadays have been like pretty lengthy and captioned because I talk about a lot of things on my social media I think it has so much power and it's really cool, I get to engage in all these conversations that I wouldn't if I just didn't have Instagram or didn't post that and I only posted like fun in the sun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Which I post I post some stuff like that too. But yeah. I I also like posted stuff about using my menstrual cup experience and that was a lot of people were like, Whoa <laughs> that's really uncomfortable to talk about but I thought it was cool. I, I have the like I have people who read it and listen to it. Like and, and like, and as also stuff with like modesty and like body image, just like all these things. I think it's really cool that I get to talk about it on Instagram. And then like, I'll also be able to look back in a year and be like, wow, so that's yeah, how yeah. I viewed the world at that point. <laughs> and so that's maybe true. it'll change. Yeah. Cool. Wow, it's like little snapshots. Yeah. It's like journal entries. Yeah, that's how I feel about it a lot of times. Nice. Hey, so then when you're like 80, you're gonna be like, <laughs> I, something, <laughs> something I think about is, okay, I don't even know if Instagram is gonna last that long, but I think about one day if my kids get social media, if they care or not, like they could potentially go and dig up and be like, oh, that's mom's ex from high school. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, that's like the stuff mom posted when she was young. But, I don't know, it's probably going to be so many posts at that point, and I don't know if Instagram is even going to be a relevant platform at that point, but it's just yeah. a funny idea yeah. if my kids were able to do that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. Huh. That's cool. Journal. So we both, okay, so we both kind of do it just like, well, but then you also journal, like, journal, journal. By myself. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. a lot of things that I should not put on the oh, yeah. internet, so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I guess going back to that, I don't know, this idea of openness is so interesting to me. Well, I just think about, like, the progression of, like, the internet a little mm -hmm. bit. I don't know. Actually, I'm not... I don't know why I try to, I'm like, I'm no expert on it, but it feels like 
It's kind of gone. Is it full circle? I don't know. But there was like a lot of people who could like put up a persona or whatever and like, um, it's, I'm, I guess I'm mainly thinking like YouTube and like make it work and like make that be successful and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and, like people would like enjoy like skits, I, I don't know, like, I don't know what I can't even think about. It. The, the guy I'm thinking of is like Shane Dawson, maybe? I never watched any of his stuff, although, as you can see, he's fallen far, far from grace if he did not fall already in 20, before 2020. Um, he's OG YouTube. <laughs> yeah. 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 But then there's like some other people. I guess I'm thinking like some Twitch streamers. They're, they have found success. I guess a lot of it maybe due to their personality, but a, a common characteristic I see from this is just like their openness. It, mm -hmm. It's not all the time is like, is it wise? Like it, it can be very blunt and like insensitive. Yeah, yeah it <laughs> but can like, be polarizing sometimes too. But there's also like this aspect of like, they will, embrace their opinion and like stand by it and like not 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 sway with the wind and like the fads and the culture mm -hmm. and yeah i feel like so it's tiles back into like this you like putting why am i doing all this like psychoanalyst this is weird <laughs> i do this so much in my head <laughs> i go into deep tunnels just overthinking things but Analyzing. Yeah. I don't know if there's even a logical train of thought anymore. I just keep talking. But, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> like, with you keeping, like, every single one of your posts and then you mentioning how, like, people want to keep 12 or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I guess people might be, like, ashamed of their old selves or something. Oh, that's a huge assumption to me. But, like, uh, there's, just, there's a certain, like, veil of, like, protection that yeah. you can have. Especially, like, I don't, like, 12 pictures, like, I don't know, like, what's the point of Instagram, but, like, in my head, maybe, like, one of it is to, like, I guess, portray your life in 12 pictures. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you get, like, the, the, the stereotyped, like, Oh, look at all my money, look at my big house, look at my yacht. And then, like, those are the pictures, or, like, you know... Like I don't the know. best? Yeah. Like, you're, like, only showing the best. Only, like, yeah, yeah. That, that stereotype. And it's just, like, okay. You know, but yeah. that's not real. I think something... Well, okay, another thing about Instagram of why that, I think, trend or culture has uh, come up or evolved into that is because uh, like the focus of Instagram as opposed to a lot of other social media platforms that focuses on aesthetics and visual you know where like Facebook it's kind of like cluttered and like uh, yeah. like you can post just words or like like it's just like a different thing and like Snapchat's like temporary but Instagram it's like more not permanent but like it has more it stays longer mm. and like um, it's like like three boxes and like that's like like in your if you click on someone's profile mm -hmm. it's like a grid format and so you can kind of curate a feed that like ties the images together and so a lot of people like um there's a lot of different types of accounts that aren't just like personal ones about your life mm -hmm. so i think like part of all that thing tying together is like people care about their aesthetic and i don't think that's bad I don't think that's like shallow. I think that it's just like an art form. Like they want to curate a feed that like ha like shows their life in a more artistic and collective fashion. You know. So I I like I don't like look down on it. I just like that's not what I want for my Instagram, right? No. So I did like. Um, how you noted about like people are attracted to authenticity, right? Um, one of my favorite YouTubers, I'm gonna give a little shout out 
He's like best dressed. Also, one of my guy friends just messaged me the other day about how he started watching her videos and like he likes her too. Like, cause she is just so, um, she incorporates so much of like her authentic, like her uh, unfiltered viewpoints on a lot of things into her videos. And so obviously like we don't see this like YouTuber like in her everyday life and people definitely always act a little bit different on camera. It's just, it's just natural. But um, for the most part, she's like very genuine and she's very vulnerable and open about her life and stuff. So I think that's what has made her so popular. And like that kind of style of like YouTubers and like influencers and stuff is becoming a lot more popular because you feel like you can trust them. You feel like you know them. And like they're not just like this far away, distant idol that has no flaws. Like you're like, oh, they're like me, but they're also successful, and like, or they're, yeah. you know. So I think that's what that's a good good thing that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how this podcast keeps like tying all this stuff together. I think that also, this point of like authenticity, like being this like, if you want like a cool thing, is uh, is also part of the culture war, mm. I feel like. Culture war. Uh, Cause like, you see, you just look at the news and like, all the stuff that keeps coming out, like, it's kind of terrifying, like, how much, uh, governments and Congress people, like, they know and they, like, keep to themselves. Mm-hmm. It's like, where's the <laughs> authenticity here? Transparency, yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, with the, the hot, uh, prosecution at the moment, or the connected to Jeffrey Epstein, like, Gil- Gis- Gilane? Gislane? I don't know how to pronounce her name. Maxwell? Like... That's- that's such an issue. Cause like, interesting case, cause like, if she- if she literally says anybody's name, um, and apparently she's connected to some like, really, really high elite tech people and other, uh, probably politicians too. Can you give me a little bit more context? Like, I've heard the name. Oh, sure. But I, honestly, I don't know, like, too much about it. So, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, he, I believe he was, like, in finance, like, investments to some degree. And so, I guess, kind of how he got money into, like, power. And then, uh, he somehow decided he wanted to go into, uh, uh, child sex trafficking, mm-hmm. and, uh, so, Ghislaine Maxwell is his ex-girlfriend. Oh. Yes. And so, like, the crazy part about it is, like, Epstein was, like, supposed to drop some names and, like, testify and stuff, but he mysteriously dies suicide, um, even though they were supposed to prevent him from it, and for some, like, there's no proof that it wasn't suicide, but it's kind of odd when, like, the guards fell asleep, and the cameras were off, uh, <laughs> and it's like, that does oh! not sound like a setup. <laughs> I mean, I, it technically could, it could still be, but... It could have been a coincidence, but just so many coincidences, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Anyways, yeah. that was a bit of politics, of world news. Oh. oh but man. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine, like... I mean, that'd be so cool, I guess, if the government was, like, more transparent, but I guess at the same time, like, understand, I guess there's some national security things you can't yeah. say. Yeah, some things too sensitive. Oh, man. 
Yeah. I think just like, well, I don't know like a ton about politics and things, but I think like in every area, people always want more transparency. Um, I'm thinking of like businesses and stuff, like people always talk about like transparency in our business structure and stuff and like where we use our money and like all that. I don't know. It's just, I yeah. guess in every relationship, you want trust and you can only really have trust if y'all are honest and like open, right? So even like us as consumers of businesses or as like citizens and the government, like in all those relationships, like, like there needs to be a level of, of like honesty and transparency. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's getting hot. Anyways, I'm good. No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to keep talking. It's been cool. Yeah, we talked about a good, good amount of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I wanna... Yeah, this would be cool to do again. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> to say bye bye Yeah, I think that was a good discussion on a lot of topics. Yeah. It was fun heard each other out. I might have talked too much. Really? I feel like in the beginning, maybe. I don't know. That's how, like, the aura felt like I was much louder. Oh. Well, then it kind of, like, balanced out. Yeah, I've been trying to work on not being too dominating in conversation. Um, also. So. Yeah. But yeah, we both got a lot of thoughts. And a lot of things to say. Yeah. Which is oh. good. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Comment down below who you want to <laughs> see Johnny talk to next. <laughs> or oh if, my. if we should do another sibling chit chat. Sibling chit chat. Oh. Chan chit chat. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really <laughs> flow. <laughs> I think I'll probably find a, a name. Yeah. Okay. I'll cut around here, whatever. Um, what do you, what do we want to do for the thumbnail? Um, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Wait, the last time we... Okay, you're gonna edit it and add words and stuff, right? Yeah. Like this, and then like the waves will be on top. Oh, there's a bongo. Please, the bongo. <laughs> can't even see it. <laughs> what if you hit the bongo? <laughs> this is the. Okay. <laughs> That's the thumbnail. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Nice.